الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear brothers and sisters Our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came into this world as a yatim, as an orphan and we know that Abdul Muttalib who was the grandfather of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had a number of sons and they say that the most beloved of the sons of Abdul Muttalib was Abdullah who is in fact the father of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Now Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib he married a woman called Amina to bintu Wahab min Bani Zahra from a tribe called Banu Zahra which was a place close to Al Madina Shortly after they uh, were married they made a journey and they went to Asham uh, to a place uh, in Palestine actually close to Gaza and they done some business there and upon returning they took the route which passed close by Al Madina that Abdullah he fell ill and then he remained uh, with his uh, relations uh, the, the uncles from his from his mother's side in a place called Banu Najjar and he remained there for a few days and then uh, then he passed away and then he was buried uh, close to Al Madina the Prophet ﷺ at this time was not yet born, but his mother was pregnant, Amina, with the Prophet ﷺ. So when the Prophet ﷺ was born, he was born a yatim, an orphan, an orphan, and his father had passed away uh, before he had actually born, was born. Now, the levels of a person who is an orphan is not the same. For example, a person who, whose father passes away before they're born is the most severest type of a person being an orphan in that that person never met their father never had any experience of any upbringing with their father as opposed to another child who maybe spent some years uh, and then maybe their father passed away while they were uh, not reached the age of, of puberty and that is islamically a definition of what a yatim or an orphan is that whose father passes away and they have not reached the age of, of puberty so the Prophet Sallallahu was born in this situation and we know that uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala tells us Alam yajidika yatiman fa'awa Did or were you not found as an orphan and then you were helped and nurtured? So this was the situation of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the very first day that he was born, a very difficult situation. We know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born on a Monday because the Prophet ﷺ said when he was asked about fasting the Monday, the Prophet ﷺ said, ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمْ وُلِدْتُ فِي This is the day that I was born. وَأُنزِلَ عَلَيَّ فِي And this was the day that I first received revelation. So we know the day that he ﷺ was born on. Also we know for sure that the Prophet ﷺ was born in Mecca. The actual placement of Mecca is somewhat different over however if any one of you have been to uh, Mecca and you have performed the uh, Safa and Marwa the, the walking between the two mountains if you exit that area just over the about 100 meters away you will see a library there and this library is said to be the place of the birth of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so his place uh, where he was born is also known it is also known that he was born in the month of Rabi' al-Awwal. This is the Islamic month, Rabi' al-Awwal. So the placement of the Prophet sallallahu birthplace is known in a, a very small house which was close to the Kaaba. As for the month he was born in, he was born in the month of Rabi' al-Awwal. As for the exact day, then the scholars have differed over this to the exact day. Some say it was the second, some say the eighth, some say the ninth, some say the tenth, the twelfth, the seventeenth, or even the twenty-second. It is not an issue or a matter which we can say absolutely that this is the day. There are, you know, maybe strong opinions to say it is either the 12th or possibly the 8th or the 9th. Wallahu a'lam. These are the most famous opinions. But it is not something we can say absolutely that this is the day of the Prophet Wasallam's birth. We know the year it was the Amul Fil. It was the year of the elephant. And this is when Abraha, who came, who was a king in Yemen, he came and wanted to destroy the Ka'aba. Destroy the Ka'aba. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down birds with this clay and then Allah jalla wa'ala destroyed them. And this is mentioned in Surah Al-Fil. Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-fil. It is a well-known surah in the Quran. Now when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born, he was under the custodianship of his mother, Amina. And we know that it is very important to have this upbringing from a mother. We know that there are many prophets 
whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran that they were brought up specifically by their mother. If you know the example of Ismail alayhi salam, he was brought up by his mother. If you know the story of Isa alayhi salam, was brought up by his mother. If you know the story of Musa alayhi salam, an amazing story, subhanAllah, whom the, his mother had to put him in a tabut, a small uh, box, and to put him in the river only to be uh, rejoined with him, subhanAllah, uh, later on, because Musa alayhi salam would not uh, breastfeed from any other woman. And then subhanAllah azza wa jalla reunited them both. So as we mentioned previously, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a well-known individual. Everything has been recorded from the place that he was born, from the date and the year, everything that was born. As for the day exactly, there is some difference of opinion. It's not something we can say exactly the day. However, everything around the situation and the birth and who his mother was and who his father was and who his relatives were, all of that is, is known. Now bearing this in mind, as Ibn Kathir, the famous scholar, he said, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born in a situation where it is the most difficult for any child to be born in where they're born and their father is not present. This means that they will go without important upbringing, important nurturing from the father. The placement of the father in the home and with the child is extremely important. And he has a, bit, a very specific role in the upbringing of, of the child, just as the mother has a very specific uh, role in bringing up the child. Now, when the Prophet Sallallahu would grow up in this way, not having uh, the father being there with him, this, as some of the scholars have said, this allowed the Prophet Sallallahu to go through and face the trial of not having that, and then therefore, whenever he Sallallahu would meet the orphans later on, he would feel and know exactly their situation. A person who never faced the trials and the difficulties of people, it is at times very, very difficult to relate to them. And as we know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, أَنَا وَكَافِلُ الْيَتِيمِ هَكَذَا فِي الْجَنَّةِ That the one uh, who looks after the yatim, one who looks after the uh, orphan, will be like this with me, will be like this with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the paradise. And there are many references in the Qur'an as well about the reward and the benefit of supporting and looking after the orphans. And this is something which maybe within our communities, something we have forgotten about that there are children who are possibly in care, there are children who need monetary support or need to be taught, whether it is the Qur'an or to be taught the religion. But sometimes we have become a little bit selfish, if you like, a little bit materialistic. There's my family, there's my sadaqah or whatever I'm earning needs to go to my blood and my family. And that we forget. We forget about those who are in need. Don't forget that the Prophet ﷺ was born as a yatim, that he was born as a, an orphan. And that when the... Uh, wet nurses, they came to Mecca to take the children out into the, uh, into, the, uh, into the Sahara, into the desert to look after the children. No one wanted to take the Prophet وسلم, because he was an orphan. This is the situation that sometimes, you know, people, they turn away from people who are in need. And as Muslims, we should not be like that. Only for Halima as Sa'diyya, that she took the Prophet وسلم, as the uh, wet nurse and she looked after him for two years. And she found in her life, subhanAllah, a complete change. The barakah that came into her life. When she came back after two years, she begged the mother for uh, her to keep the Prophet وسلم, for a longer time. And, she st and we know that the Prophet وسلم, stayed with her for about another two years until the incident where uh, Allah Jalla wa sent the angel Jibreel to open up the chest and to clean the heart of Rasulullah with Zamzam. The children, they saw this and they brought the child, the Prophet ﷺ, to Halima. She became very scared. And then the child, uh, Ayy Muhammad وسلم, was sent back to his mother. So this is a, a very important point for us to care for those who are uh, in this uh, situation, who are very needy. There's also a benefit, actually, that some of the ulama that they mention, in that the Prophet وسلم, was you know, brought up with, without a father. And when he وسلم, was chosen by Allah وسلم, to receive the revelation, become a prophet and messenger, there was no one who could claim that your father taught you all of these, uh, this revelation that you are claiming. He didn't have that. Therefore, we know for sure that the, 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 the Quraysh who rejected the Prophet were unable to say such a thing. Because the placement of a father with any, uh, in the tribal system is extremely important. And that they miss out on so many things. And if that is missing, then they are, unfortunately, that they are looked down upon. So the Prophet wasallam grew up as an orphan and went through very difficult uh, situations in that only after six years being with his mother, his mother passed away and then put into the care of his grandfather, 
Abdul Muttalib. So in the first eight years of the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, being born not knowing his father, and then his mother passing away, and then when spending only two years with his grandfather Abdul Muttalib, who actually named the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he also passed away. And it is known that when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was born, that Abdul Muttalib he came to the, uh, of course, an animal sacrificed, giving thanks, and then they knew that they had to name the child and people were asking Abdul Muttalib, what are you going to name him? What name are you going to give this baby boy? And he replied, I'm going to name him Muhammad. And the people were amazed, that why are you going to name him Muhammad? Muhammad at that time was a name which was really very rare. Only a few people of the past had actually named their children Muhammad. When it was said to them, uh, when he was asked, Abdul Muttalib, why are you naming him Muhammad? He simply replied, I have hope that this individual be, will be the one who is praised on earth and the one who will be praised in the heavens. This person had a good intention concerning the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And similarly, we should have good intentions and good hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, strong hope in Allah jalla wa ala, that similarly, when we name our children with good names, beautiful names, that we think that it's my son or my daughter, that they will be something. Lahum sha'an. That they will have something big in the, deen, in the deen of Islam, that they will become a personality, they will be a carrier of this religion. We should have these hopes for our children. But it is not false hope, because we need to work towards that. Because the hope is not done is just at, the, at the time of birth, but you have to work and strive and struggle, looking after and up uh, to uh, bring, uh, bring your child in the best possible manner, knowing the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I ask Allah jalla wa ala to preserve all of our children and that we become uh, the best of uh, nurturers for our children. Allahumma amin, barakallahu fikum, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.